Hey guys, it's Dan Book McNoggin, and I wanted to share with you Batman vs. Big B, A Wolf in Gotham. Um, this is another DC Black Label book, so this is for mature readers. Um, this is also another, like, kind of multiverse kind of story, I guess you could say. And I'm gonna tell you right now that this isn't... I don't really think this, think of this as a spoiler, but Big B, who is from... From fables written by by uh, Willingham, they have their own universe, of course. And this one, uh, for some reason, Big B and some other people from the fables universe kind of cross over into this universe with this universe's Batman, and they're trying to, you know, something somebody from their universe had crossed over into this Batman's universe and. Yes, that can get kind of muddied and complicated, and we're not gonna we're not gonna talk too much about that. We're just gonna talk about this book. Um, but yeah, if you are someone who has read the Fables series, um, I read a good majority of it. I think that uh, I kind of gave up near the end of the Fables series because it kind of got a little, you know, there was like a major story arc, and once that was finished, I kind of lost interest in Fables. But I did enjoy it. I did enjoy the character of Big B Wolf. Um, I even played that PlayStation 4 game that um, that they made of the Fables. But, you know, I, I did enjoy this. Um, I do have some issues with it, and that's why I wanted to talk about this book. Um, of course, this Batman is not the Batman that everybody knows. This is Willingham's take on Batman. Um, so we have a different Batman and kind of Robin situation going on here. Um, in this Batman's universe, he has a number of kids that he's training under him. So he has multiple Robins. He has more than just one Robin. He's got a whole fucking crew of Robins. Um, this Batman is also kind of different. I thought this Batman was a little more off-the-fly kind of douchey. He was kind of super douchey and not really analytical, like not really as much of a detective as I've seen in other Bat books. Um, but I guess that Bigby kind of takes on the detective role. Like he's more of a detective in this book than Batman is. Um... This is kind of interesting. I mean, the major highlighted character seems to be Bigby Wolf and the whole trying to track down the Fables character that's loose in Gotham. Um, there were major plot holes, though. Like, it kind of ended and it was like, it was like, okay, that's all done and let's move on. They're leaving this universe, going back to their home. So in the mystery salt, but it kind of left like a plot hole. Like they didn't really explain, you know, like it, it kind of felt rushed, like very kind of rushed, like let's hurry up and get this story done and over with. And like I said, it didn't really feel like any other Batman like that I've read. And I've, I'm not a Batman expert by all means. I'm, I'm not like a huge Batman fan, but I've read enough Batman to know that this didn't really feel like your average Batman. So, you know, I thought this one was okay. It was okay for a crossover event, um, for a DC Black Label. They've done better DC Black Label stories. But, you know, the appeal to for this was the crossover with Big B Wolf and Batman. So that's why I wanted to read it. And let's face it, it was okay. It was an okay storyline. Like I said, it had its plot holes. Um, Batman didn't really feel like Batman. The Robins, I thought, was a little weird because I feel like Batman's not that much of a dick. You know, he's not like... He cares about his Robins. He cares about his fucking community. But the way this Batman came off, he came off as a huge asshole. Like, he's just, like, training these kids to be his Robins and... It felt off-putting. I just, I gave this a 3 out of 5 star rating on Goodreads. It's okay if you are someone who needs more fables in your life. If you need more Bigby Wolf in your life. And you want to see what his interactions with, according to the guy who writes fables, what his interactions with Batman would be like. Then go ahead and check this out. 
Um, it is, it is, it's okay. It was a decent read. Um, I'm not going to add this to, to my collection because I didn't think it was that great. But of course, as always, if you are living in the U.S. and you want to buy a copy of this, I will have a link to Amazon down below for you to check this out for yourselves. If you want to help support my channel in another way, by all means, I will have my coffee link down below. Um, and I know inflation times are tough, but if you have a little bit to spare, if you can buy me a coffee or two, it greatly helps my channel. Um, if you came here looking for more comic book reviews and recommendations, by all means, hit that subscriber button. And while you're there, hit that notification bell. This has been Dan. This has been Batman vs. Big B. I was kind of, I, I felt like I was underwhelming, guys. I felt like I was let down by this. I mean, it's something that, you know, it's like a big crossover. I was kind of super stoked for it, and I was excited for it. And then when I actually read it, I was like, oh, that's it. Like I said, Batman came across as an asshole, which didn't really, it doesn't feel right. But it is what it is. Like I said, it's a decent read if you want to check it out. If you want more Big B, you know, it's been a while. Go ahead and check it out. Till next time. Later, guys.